Susan Sun Nanomaker with sunisfuture.net. I'm here in this beautiful setting with uh, Murali from GT Advanced Technologies and he has some wonderful news about the product they're coming out and uh, showing us. Um, Murali, tell Hi. us, what do we so, have here? Uh, yeah, um, I, uh, we are with uh, GT Advanced Technologies. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, have been investing heavily in the solar space for the last, uh, through the entire downturn. And we have come up with a, a unique interconnect technology which addresses the entire value chain. So typically, if you look at the history of solar, bulk of the uh, innovation has come in the solar, solar cell part of it. And the panel making technology has remained what it was 30 years ago. So, you know, as, just as a quick one, I would like you to lift this and see. Um, it has only six cells, it's very heavy. And the reason it's very heavy is that solar panels have to be very rigid. And the reason they have to be very rigid is that the, uh, the solar cells and the interconnects are very fragile. And because these puppies are expected to last for 25 years, they need to be uh, made in a very uh, hefty fashion though, that they will survive. Right? Yes. And just before, I, just before I pitch the rest, this is a 12-cell module. So two times the uh, volume of cells that there is, and it's extraordinarily light. Not only that, this is a glass class module. It has two pieces of glass, whereas this one has only a single piece of glass. So we fundamentally believe we are going to change the way solar panels, solar cells, and solar installations are done in the future. It's probably more durable and way also durable. weight a lot less, which means less transporting cost and everything down the road. Exactly. Oh, okay, fantastic. Less insulation cost, less transporting cost. Mm -hmm. We should introduce the, the Merlin, yes. the name of the technology that we're talking about. Oh, we should also introduce you two, too. Yes, uh, please. please uh, tell yeah. us a little about what your name and what your position yeah, is. Yeah, Jeff Nesselpad. I'm the director of Senior Director of Marketing for GT Advanced Technologies. And i um, been with the company about five years and work with our friends here in, uh, from our office out in San Jose where this development uh, has been taking place. And here and I'm Andrew Barta with Advanced, GT Advanced Technologies, and I'm in the Vice President of Sales of the new technology, the Merlin Interconnect Technology. So we are definitely seeing uh, really uh, the core of the team here. And would you tell us how about you? You haven't shown us this yeah, particular... Yeah, I'll show this to you in a second as well. So the, the, I think the fundamentals are as follows, right? A typical solar cell uh, uh, interconnect technology involves applying silver on the cell and all these silver lines are connected by additional silver put in these are called bus bars so think of this as a battery think of this as a battery and so you have to con connect the front of the first battery to the back of the next battery so the way that is done is a, co a copper wire is soldered on to the front of this and the back of the adjacent cell right so an electron which is produced in the solar cell has to traverse these very narrow thin lines of silver get onto these copper super highways, if you will, and then exit and collect out when you essentially tap out of the panel, right? So in doing this, the electrons that are produced must travel with the minimum amount of electrical resistance. It's called R series. The traditional method has two problems. One, the resistance that the electron encounters is very large. So you lose out a lot of the electrons you produce through these resistive losses. Second, in order to minimize the resistive losses, the lines have to be quite broad and wide. It has two problems to it. When they are broad and wide, the amount of light hitting the silicon, which is where the electrons are generated, reduces. Second, silver is a precious metal. That's why we use it in jewelry. It's very expensive and a lot of material is used in this. And the last one, which is a slightly more uh, uh, involved one, is that when this thing flexes, the area between the cells, which is connected by these copper wires, gets flexed. And like when you take a pin and keep moving it back and forth, mm -hmm. it fails in fatigue. Uh, and once it fails, there would be an arcing event which happens and actually sets this whole thing on fire. You oh, have shattered okay. glass and stuff. Oh. So what we enable with our technology is that we eliminate these three bus bars entirely. We eliminate these three we'll bus bars of silver entirely and in its stead we put these narrow thin lines of copper so the electron now has to traverse very small distances on the uh, thin silver lines 
So it is collected efficiently by 20 super highways, if you will, instead of three. So the series resistance losses are reduced. That's one. The second one is if you look in this area, it's not just three bus bars anymore. There are 20 here and there are 38 here. So I can put the right amount of copper in the right place because this is where the current is at its maximum. Okay. And the interconnect between the cells has even more number of interconnects. Mm -hmm. And they are shaped to maximize its resistance to failure when it's flexed. Very good. So now we enable form factors that have not been enabled. So we reduce the cost of the cell by reducing the amount of silver. Mm -hmm. We reduce the cost of the wafer by increasing the out power output by improving efficiency. We make the panel much more uh, resilient to all kinds of weatherability, mm -hmm. so durability improves. It's much lighter weight, easier to transport as you mentioned, right. and also from an install perspective, we can install it much cheaper. Ah, so there's one of those yes. changes which actually changes the way panels are made, but affects the entire value chain. Very good. An increased reliability and durability. Increased reliability and Fantastic. durability. And the magic behind this is really these two, these two pieces, uh, which we call grids. So instead of people buying wires, we actually sell them these oh. uh, grids, which oh, are manufactured. Okay. So one of the out, you know, standout features of uh, solar industry is, while everybody wants really low cost, mm -hmm. nobody wants to take any kind of risk, which is understandable, because they have to guarantee it for 25 years in the field. Mm -hmm. So any changes you make have to be minimally uh, minimally affecting what they've already certified. So mm -hmm. what we have done is, these are identical in materials to the copper ribbons used here. So no new atoms in the panels themselves, it's identical. Second, people don't want any science experiment. This is a <laughs> multi-gigawatt industry, you want to ramp and ramp fast. Mm -hmm. So this is an incredibly uh, um, innovative but very easy to ramp technology. So we are coming out with a 100 megawatt line at the end of the year to just produce these. So our customers don't need to introduce it and then wait for it to ramp. We will ramp it and being a large company like GT enables us to do that. Making it a very cheap technology enables us to do that. And the, and the last bit is in terms of manufacturability on the line for my customer, they essentially have to throw away one of their tab stringers and replace it with the tool we provide them. Right? So the CapEx Delta to my customer is extraordinarily low. So I'm trying to meet all the constraints of the solar industry, mm -hmm. make the risk very low, make the rewards very high, and make it very easy to implement. And we are the only guys who can do it in this space. Yeah, all of that while you're generating more power. That's great. Oh, fantastic. But right now, uh, are they available in, I mean, in so all we states? Or? We are working with our lead customers in this. So a change of this magnitude needs very specific customer types to engage with. That's what we are doing right now. Uh, we are gated by mass release by our uh, production facility in Thailand coming up uh, by the end of the year, right? So till then, we are essentially working with customers, working through, uh, mod, you know, making these customized to their particular needs. So when they ramp, they ramp at full speed. At full speed Very good. So one of the things we're trying to be, you know, careful of as we roll this technology out is not to um, promise on things that we can't deliver. So what we're really doing is going through the final uh, process of completing the development and then scaling the technology so that when it's fully av commercially available early in 2015 we can actually deliver the materials at a volume that's going to meet the expectations of our customers. So we, we started this development in early 2013. Now will you be able to take orders uh, let's say that's at the end of the 2014? Commercially available, so, yes, okay. right. So our definition is that we can take an order from a customer and fulfill that order. The, the way we are set up on that is as follows. Again, we have announced this publicly. Uh, we said in late summer, we will certify the technology. We will probably, uh, not probably, we will meet it uh, comfortably. Um, the, then subsequently, when we go out to the market, we want to not only service one customer at pirate volumes, we want to service multiple customers at a fast ramping volume. And that's how we are setting this technology and we're doing it one step at a time mm -hmm. to make sure that our, my customer comes in, 
with minimal risk to them. For example, a ribbon vendor will never do a cert. We actually are completing a cert to enable my customer to walk in, look at it and say, let's go. Okay. And what do you foresee in terms of um, uh, local uh, distributorship? Is it possible that eventually you will look into that? or? So my, my personal opinion is the following, which is I, I think this offers uh, the ability to manufacture cost competitively even in the U.S. Right, which is a big statement to make because China has been the absolute leader in the space and they will continue to be a big leader. But this technology actually puts everybody on an equal footing because it, you could buy cells from China, for example, make it way more efficient and have a form factor which is different, um, whether it is for standard high volume application or it is for advanced cell application or for applications such as the military where lightweight, transportability, or even theater of war applications are needed. Because if you were to put a bullet hole in in this cell, mm -hmm. it'll continue to operate. You put a bullet hole into one of these, you'll lose the power. Yes. Well, one this thing to remember true. about Merlin is that it's um, it really integrates with any cell architecture. So there's a lot of um, uh, adoption that can take place because we're not we're not asking cell manufacturers to change their manufacturing processes. We're going to fit Merlin into their manufacturing process. So again, as Mer Merlin has been saying, the 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 risk factor in terms of adopting this is very very low, and from a capex standpoint, you know, very minimal capital outlay to integrate Merlin into their existing uh, cell process uh, manufacturing lines. Fantastic. That's why you call it Merlin. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's truly magical. Yes. Oh, fantastic. So, and you know, one one last thing which I wanted to show uh, your viewers who are technically inclined. Um, if you look at the cell to cell interconnect, you are limited to three in the standard one, right? If you look at ours, there are 183 interconnects, right? And each of these interconnects is appropriately shaped, um, sized, for lack of a better word to give you that maximum uh, reliability. And this is a big deal, right? If you take a look at people who do power producer agreements, um, the longer the panel would last in the field, the more money they make. So the durability of the modules is a very critical factor, not just the reliability. This interconnect now eliminates all the worries related to interconnect failure and fires, etc. So they can now start focusing on alternate materials, which can really dramatically change it from being these thick, heavy, glass panel-based stuff to polymers that are impact resistant and at the same time very cost effective. Might so it, been, it will change the bulk. Uh, it might eventually even in reduce the cost of insurance for uh, a Liability lot of these. Insurance. Uh, yes. Yes. That would be fantastic. Oh, wow, wonderful. Uh, we're really looking forward to hearing more about uh, your products as it comes on board and uh, Definitely, thank you very much for spending the time with us. And signing off, Susan Sun Nanomaker with Sun's Future. Remember, look for GT Advanced Technologies. <music>